Okay guys, in this video I will talk about the SAG rule. Okay, so if you are new to this channel, please do subscribe and also don't forget to press the bell icon so that in future you can be benefited. Okay, so at the very first, what is SAG rod? Well, if you are familiar with the steel building, okay, where each and every component of the superstructure is made of steel, you know that to cover the shed or the building, you need to use sheet, okay, and this sheeting is simply resting over some member which is known as parling, okay. And also, if you need to cover the side of the building, in that case also, you need to put some extra member which are known as guard. Okay. So, these are the guard. 1, 2, 3. And here, this is the parling. Okay. And now, there are different type of parling. Okay. Or the guard. You can use circular member as parling and also as guard. Okay. Or you can use some z set member like this this is known as z parling okay so you can also use this z set section as parling and guard the problem arises when you use this z set parling and guard why because this z set parling and guard are fixed over this rafter or the beam okay so this is the beam here but if you use truss in that case these parling are fixed over the rafter okay so the only this leg is fixed with this beam or this rafter okay and the top flange is completely unsupported and if you closely look into this Z set parling. Here you can see that this is the rafter because here we have used this truss. Okay, or if you use this beam, in that case also the bottom leg is only fixed with this rafter or the beam, but the top flange, the top flange is completely unsupported. And what will happen if you have any amount of lateral load which is being applied over this parling or over this gut okay maybe due to earthquake or due to wind or maybe some uh, operational load this top flange buckle and the parling become completely unstable okay so what you have to do whenever you are using this z set parling and guard you have to make sure that the top flange of this section is laterally supported right okay now you have got a basic idea about the problem when you are using z set parling and guard okay so now the question is how to provide the lateral support very simple i have discussed a lot in my previous videos and again i am repeating that okay just consider this simple longitudinal section of any pipe rack and you know that in pipe rack there are different type of lateral load whether it is wind load or whether it is pipe frictional load or any type of notional load okay there are lots of lateral load acting on any pipe rack and due to this lateral load what will happen this column tends to buckle simply all this column tends to buckle due to this lateral load about the minor axis of all this column i am not going into the detail because i have discussed a lot about this topic okay you can go to the playlist and there you can check the bracing okay and you will get the idea about bracing so by the way to resist this buckling against this lateral load what you have to do you have to simply connect all this column by the strut okay so once you are using the strut and you are connecting all the column what will happen all the lateral load will be transferred through this strut without affecting the column if yes if you have provided a path where 
all this lateral load will be accumulated and will be transferred to the foundation okay only in that case all this buckling of the column under this lateral load will be resisted okay so first what you have to do you have to simply connect all the column by using this strut okay then you have to transfer this lateral load through this strut to a certain point then from that point you have to transfer this lateral load to foundation by using this vertical bracing very simple okay now again come to our problem here all the pollens here you can see this is the pollen this is the pollen this is the pollen okay all these are the pollen where we are using z set section okay so all the top flanges are laterally unsupported so what we have to do simply connect them by using this start this one 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 this strut are known as sag rod very simple but here you can say well at the end you are not providing any bracing so how the bending or the buckling of the top flange of this parlin is being resisted okay well very good so in that case at the end simply provide a bracing like this okay so in this side also let's say this is the ridge okay this is the ridge line and this is the first parlin of the left side this is the left side this is the right side okay so lateral load is applied here then it is being transferred to this strut then to this strut then to this then this then this and finally let's say this is the last one so here we have not provided any bracing so where this load is going to transfer nowhere so now the lateral instability is not prevented okay the top flange will buckle correct so once you are providing a bracing like this all the lateral load will be arrested here and it will go to this point or to this point by using this diagonal strut okay so clearly draw some plan view okay how to provide this simple strut or the sag rod and also the diagonal sag rod okay and before that let's just have a look into the picture of a sag rod it's very simple just like a rod okay it may be 12 mm diameter okay but the length is normally 3 meter the length is 3 meter okay and if this is the z shaped parlin then to resist the buckling of the stop flange you have to connect this one this sag rod close to the top flange in the web part okay so here you can see you can you can pause the video to see how to connect the parlin by using the sag rod here 16 diameter sag rod has been used okay so this is the plan let's say this is one beam or the truss and this is another truss okay so in between two truss we have multiple number of parlin this is the first parlin this is the second parlin this is the third fourth and fifth okay so to resist the buckling of top flange of the parlin here we are using z set parlin okay so this is fixed at the bottom so we have to resist the buckling of the stop flange what we have to do we have to connect this parlin by using sag rod okay so here is one sag rod here is another here is another here is another but if the lateral load is applied here and we have only this four number of sag rod one two three four we do not have any diagonal in that case it is completely 
failure it will buckle the top flange of the z purlin will buckle but once you are providing at least one set of diagonal sag rod then this buckling will be arrested okay you need not to use two set or three set at least use one set of this diagonal sag rod and your purpose will be solved okay so now i think it is clear to you why the rods here is being used to connect all this z poly okay so that's it if you love this video don't forget to share it